Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I know yesterday we had a beautiful, sunshiny, kind of warm day, and today we're back to a little bit of rain and coolness, but um, we're all here this morning, and that's a good thing. And it's good to see everybody this morning. So our worship scripture this morning is Psalm 28, 7. So it says, I'm going to read it back here because I didn't pull it up in the Bible. My bad. Yeah, hope you guys can hear me. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart rejoices, and I praise him with all my song. beautiful scripture this morning. We needed that. All right, so if you will join me in the back of your bulletins, we have a few announcements we're going to do today. Um, Of course, this week we have a leadership meeting on the 7th at 530. Um, Scout Sunday is next Sunday, so please join us as we are um, going to celebrate our scouts and um, talk a little bit about what scouts means and um, also what they do and then um, we have the crew meeting on the 14th we have the assembly outreach on the 17th from 11 a.m. to 2 we ask that everybody if you're able please join us for that Um, it's a great outreach that we're doing with the assembly um, and we have lots um, lots of needs for helping hands and then um, it's not on the bulletin, so I'm going to add it. DWF meeting, the first one for the year, is on the 18th after church. And um, we're going to have a finger food fellowship. So we ask that everybody bring a finger food to share. Um, and the women are going to get together and just renew some old relationships and talk about what we want to do with the group um, in the coming year. So that'll be exciting. Um, and then, again, we have the crew meeting on the 28th. I want to draw your attention to March 9th. It's our church cleanup day. We have lots of rooms um, that need to be cleaned up, uh, reorganized, and um, made ready for new projects. So um, if anybody is really good at organizing, that that's the day we need you the most. Um, then we'll be doing some simple cleanup around the properties um, and in and out of other buildings as well. So please join us for church cleanup day. It starts at 10, correct? Yes. 10 a.m. Um, and then we'll go to whenever we get it done. So, and maybe where we uh, all bring your lunch and, and we may work till probably no later than two. So bring your lunch um, and we'll have a church cleanup day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do what? Isn't that on Friday? No, it's supposed to be a Saturday. Has it got the wrong date? Okay. It's a Saturday. Okay, that'll be after Friday. Okay. Anybody who wants to join Charlie on Friday, Charlie says he will be here on the 8th. You're welcome to come help Charlie. He's going to be mowing. I'll be in the chair in the tree. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, the rest of us will be here on Saturday, so come both days. We'll make a party out of it. Anybody else have anything? No? All right. So if you will, please join me in the call to worship. Called by God, we have come to worship. Called by Christ, we have come to follow. Called by the Spirit, we have come to rejoice. All together, we will listen and pray. All right. If y'all will please stand. And join me in the praise hymn, number 66, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. And it's number 66, verses 1 and 4, please.
us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we that you will watch over us and that you will bless us and that you will help us to share your love to others in every contact that we have. And Lord, help us as we pray this prayer your son taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. So it's been very interesting. So I'm glad to see you all in one piece. We know mostly well. So like I said, this is some interesting weather we're having. So that's a joy in itself that you know we're still in decent health even in this. So we've come to the point in our service that we give joys and concerns, those things that are on our hearts, the people who are on our hearts, and those we think we need to lift up, and also the good things that God is doing in our lives. So I will start off with two, and then we'll see what else we have. I've been informed about a young man by the name of Christopher Bell just to keep him lifted up in prayer. He has a few health things going on, but just let's keep him lifted up. Um, also, um, an uncle of mine who's from out of Macon, uh, his name is Antonio Mims. Um, we just found out yesterday that he had a heart attack. And so we're trying to keep him lifted up. Thankfully, he's doing okay. He's better now. And so let's make sure we keep him lifted up as well. So any other um, joys or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Um, our daughter, Melissa, called us this morning, and we could tell immediately she was very heartbroken. Um, a longtime friend of her husband's family, and mm. since she's been in that family for a while, it's a longtime friend of hers, right. uh, passed away last evening unexpectedly. Her uh -huh. in-laws were even with them having dinner, and after they had left, he apparently started having severe vertigo he closed his eyes and took his last breath mm, so he apparently wow. had a heart attack severe heart attack so the friends and family of gary dixon the yeah. ixon so they're all pretty broken up this morning the ixon the ixon gotcha gary the friends and family of gary dixon we'll make sure you keep them lifted up any others yes sir uh remember sister carol Dealing with a lot of pain right now. I went to Dr. Friday. They're trying to figure out what's causing it. But yeah. Would you? Okay. What's that? Um, a couple of things. Um, okay. First off, if we could let, pray for the Duffy family. Um, Wyatt is one of JT's long-term friends, and his mother is um, terminally ill with cancer, and we don't know how much time she has left. It's very difficult for all of them. So if we could please keep the gift. Duffy family in prayers and specifically Wyatt because mm -hmm. he's having a hard time. Um, and then also I have a joy. I didn't okay. mention it last Sunday because I was so new. Um, <laughs> but I have a new job starting not this coming Monday but the following Monday. Um, I will be leaving hospice and going to the hospital and I will be the new palliative coordinator. Um, so I'm excited about that and the possibilities of helping and reaching more people. So. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. 
you know, you'll be right near. So I might just come over and mess with you from time to time. <laughs> as soon as I find your office, you'll be like, oh, that's Pastor. You're just nobody knock. I'm like, yep, that's him. Well, okay, well, congratulations on that. That's awesome. And we'll make sure to keep the Guffy family in our prayers as well. So, yeah, we want to keep Mike and Mary Jane in prayer. Because they're, they're still healing. Yeah, sure. They reported, I texted them last week, and they said, they, yeah, they caught it in time. Mm -hmm. They can still clean it, but we don't have We just need to keep them touch. Right. I agree. Wholeheartedly. Okay. Awesome. And then let's also make sure we keep the Hodgson, Hodgson's in prayers. I know Shannon flew back to be with her mom for her uh, for her knee surgery. So let's make sure we keep them lifted up as well. Any other? Oh, yes, sir. I've got another. You know, it's kind of like one in, one out. It's good. You're good. Um, also, uh, I think we've lifted her up before. Diana mm -hmm. Kigginbotham. You got to show me that name afterwards, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, her husband, Paul, has been a good friend of both of us for a long, long time. Uh -huh. And um, she has been having issues. She's back in the hospital, uh, very discouraged because they can't seem to find out what's wrong with her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's had some strokes before. She's around 60, so she's not an elderly person. But right. we're just having trouble figuring out what's wrong with her. And okay. So we're very concerned about her and, and her husband, Paul. Okay, we'll definitely keep them both with it up. Diane and Paul. Diana and Paul. Diana and Paul. Diana. Gotcha. gotcha. All right. Any others? If not, let us go in prayer. Dear Father, we lift all these names up to you today, Lord. You know each of these people individually because you made them. As your word says, you knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. God, we ask that you watch over Chris Rappel that you give him the strength he needs to continue to fight. Lord, we ask that you watch over Antonio Mims as he has had this, this scare in his life and ask God that you guide him in the way that he should go. God, we ask that you watch over the friends and family of Gary Dixon, for Lord, they have lost someone who means a lot to them. Be with them, comfort them, and keep them. Lord, we ask you continue to have grace and mercy with Sister Carol that you allow the doctors to find out what the issue is so we can, so that they can bring, bring her some relief. But even in these moments of pain, continue to be with her and continue to comfort her. God, we ask that you watch over the Guffy family. And we ask that you specifically watch over Wyatt right now for he's taking this hard that his mother is in this situation. But we believe that we hand it over to you because we can do nothing else. But we know that all power is still in your hands. God, we thank you for allowing Janetta to have this new opportunity in her life. God, we ask that you bless her as she goes and that people will see Christ through her in this new environment that she's going in. Lord, we lift up Michael and Mary, God, asking that you continue to watch over them and keep them. We thank you, God, for allowing us to catch what was going on early so that they can begin treatment and they can begin healing. And God, we ask that you watch over finally Diana and Paul. But Lord, you know the stress that it is to not know what's going on internally. And so we ask God that you continue to comfort them, be with them, keep them, and give them peace. We lift all these names to you, and Lord, even the names that are on our hearts but we didn't say out loud. We ask God you continue to watch over each person in this room, continue to watch over their health, and continue to watch over their homes. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray, and let every heart say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Next we will have our communion hymn which is hymn 97, Fairest Lord Jesus. Sweet. All verses. All verses.
take the time to reverence the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we do this in remembrance of him, that we do this not haphazardly, but in full worship and love of who God is in each and every one of our lives. So in the way that he was with his disciples, he first took the bread and said, this is my body, take and eat. In the same way he took the wine, which you see said, this is my blood, take and drink. It comes a time in our service where we give unto the Lord our tithes and offerings. Um, as always, I've told you all last week of one blessing that God is doing for us, and I believe that there are more to come. So again, we thank you all for every contribution, for every tithe, every offering, every seed that's sown, because it is going into fertile ground, and it's doing something for this church and for this community, and we just have to wait and see, but I believe more is to come. <laughs> Verses 54 through 60. Give you all a chance to get there. Um, I want to take this moment to thank the leadership for meeting with me yesterday. Um, I think that it was a great time that we all had learned something about ourselves and each other that some of them were still kind of like, oh my, I didn't see that coming. And so it was very fun to be with you all. And I think it shows that as we discover more about ourselves, we discover more about our church. And that way we can glorify God all the more. Acts chapter 7, verses 54 through 60. When you got it, say amen. amen. Need a minute? Say hold on. Oh, yeah, we're good. Please stand for the reading of God's word. Let's begin. I'll be reading from the Holy Christian Standard Bible. And it reads, when they heard these things, they were enraged in their hearts and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled by the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. He saw God's glory with Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they screamed at the top of their voices, covered their ears, and together rushed against him. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They were stoning Stephen 
as he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And saying this, he fell asleep. You may be seated. Dear God, we ask that this word be a blessing to each and every one of our hearts, our minds, and our very souls, that it may be used to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The title of today's message, as we continue in the series of um, being the church, and of course in the, in the year series of building the living church, is why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? We see that Stephen, in the earlier part of chapter 7, took, a, took an historic approach explaining to them that they are not too far from the ancestors that they think they were evolved so much from. That there is a lot of hate, there is a lot of evil, there is a lot of corruption still in the people of God. And it shows not just in their words, but in their actions. And I love what verse 53 said, because he said, you received the law under the direction of angels, yet you have not kept it. Which means you have received word directly from the Lord of hosts himself, but we still saw fit to do what we wanted to do instead of doing what God said to do. But it's interesting what happens in verse 54, because then there is an anger, there's a rage that shows because of everything that Stephen has said. But the thing that's interesting is that he didn't tell a lie. He didn't do unto them what they had done to him. He stood, as some would say, flat-footed and told the truth. He told the whole truth. He told the historical Hebraic truth. He told from Abraham on to the current day, he told the truth. But even with the truth, when corruption is in us, the truth will anger us. We've all been at some point or another a person who's been caught in a lie. And you have two reactions. You either one, submit to the truth, or two, you become angry angry, and you double down. If you haven't done it, God bless you. I've messed up a couple of times and done that myself. But it's because it's human nature to want to defend yourself even when we're wrong. But it's interesting that the verse says that they were enraged, not in just an actual outside sense, but even in the very parts of their heart. But how angry are they that they begin to gnash their teeth? You know how angry you have to be to gnash your teeth at someone? To have to hold back rage because you're so infuriated that you want to do something. You want to react. And it's scary because oftentimes we sit in places where we sometimes are surrounded by people who have very corrupt and messed up ideas of who Christ is, of who God is, and even who we as Christians are. But if you're like some of us, we have been silent in these spaces because we know that we're the only one. Or sometimes we know that there are others who are around us who don't agree, but nobody wants to be that one person. Nobody wants to be the person at the barbershop and people are saying outlandish and crazy things about the church, about Christ, about pastors, about Christians. And then we don't want to be the person that says, well, that's not true. Because we often know that we'll have to stand alone because even if there are people who agree with what we're saying, they don't want to be that one person. But church, we have to learn how to be able to stand as Stephen stood. I didn't mean for that to be three S's, but it is. To stand as Stephen stood and to know the truth and say the truth and be okay with what comes after. Because we're in a time now that people are bold and wrong and they're okay with it. Because they can get a reaction out of people. So they want to manipulate people instead of giving them truth. As Christians and believers in Christ, we stand, we live, and we breathe for the truth. And so that means that there has to be moments that we stand as Stephen stood, even if we have to stand alone. Because there are moments that Christ is saying, if you want to continue developing in this relationship, there are moments you have to be okay when nobody around you agrees with you. Whether that be, again, in the barbershop, in the salon, I don't have enough help for that. Whether you're around family members, around friends, you have to be okay. We have to be okay with being sometimes in spaces where nobody agrees 
with the standard of God. And we stand on it, not boastfully, not pridefully, but humbly, because we stand in a position, not that we're perfect, but instead that we know that God even forgave us in our imperfection and in our sin. It is a tough road, I promise you. It is a tough road, but we still have to do it. And sometimes we'll fail. Sometimes we'll come short. But I promise you this much, God is saying, it's okay. I'll let you try again. Because we serve a God who is a God of mercy, a God of love, a God of understanding. And there are some situations that we've never had to stand up in. And so we're afraid to stand in them truthfully. But God is saying that in this year of 2024, because people are so loud about lies and about untruths, that the church needs to stand up and be louder than ever before. The weird thing that we see in the text, though, is that after they showed this rage towards Stephen, but then what happened to Stephen was that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he saw Christ and he saw God. He saw the presence of God and he saw Christ standing at the right hand of God. But instead of enjoying that moment for himself, the Bible says that he still said, look, I see the Lord and I see the son of man standing on the right hand of God, which means even after he sees the rage of people's faces, he still wants them to see Christ. Because if he wanted it for himself, there would have never been a part that said, look, he would have just seen it and said for himself, I see the glory of the Lord. But instead, he wants them to see it too. So even after he gives truth, he still wants to lead people to Christ. And that's what we have to be okay with, giving the heart, harsh truths that may convict the heart, but still showing people who Christ is. Sometimes in life, we have an issue where people will bash about the truth, but never lead people back to Christ. We are doing an unfinished work if we don't bring it full circle and bring it back to Jesus. We have people who claim to be Christians who will beat people up for sin, but will never give the fullness of forgiving power of Christ and show them that God still loves them. Do we understand that we're in a time now that people know the wrong things about the church more than they know the love of God? The most that some people know who have the ignorance is that God is love. Or people will say that he doesn't give me more than I can bear but they don't have what we call a genuine relationship because they know the things they shouldn't do more than the way to live for Christ. Church, that has to change. As the people of God, we have to be people who walk in a way that shows that we're with Christ, who talk in a way that shows that we're with Christ, but we also love in a way that shows that we're with Christ. We have to be like Stephen, that even after we've taken the moment to break down the issues, to break down the evils, Jesus must be the last thing that we say so that when people may be having those vulnerable, moment, vulnerable moments as we've seen in Pentecost, as we've seen in other situations, and as we'll see future as we go into Acts, is that there are moments that people say, what must I do to be saved? Because if truth comes from us with all the intent of God in Christ, the reaction that will happen is, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have the right relationship with God because of the sacrifice that Christ gave? So yes, stand on truth. And yes, some people may be angry, but show them the love of Christ anyway. Show them that this is not all that you can be. Show them that there is more from you and there's more in you. When you take Christ in and you accept him and submit to him, there is still more on the inside of you. People don't understand self-worth anymore, so that's why they're willing to treat themselves any kind of way, because they don't understand that they are beautifully and wonderfully made, that God wants them to have life and have it more abundantly. We wonder why we have generations that can hurt themselves and hurt others because they don't see self-worth, and we have to sometimes ask them, why are you so angry because you don't see the fullness of who you are? We don't always tell people who they are, we have to make sure we understand that God still sees them for the beautiful thing that he made. We see that after Stephen had taken the time to try to get them to see Christ, because their hearts were so corrupted, they still couldn't hear. For verse 57 says, Then they screamed at the top of their voices, covered their ears together, and rushed him. That means that they've come to a point 
of pride and anger that I don't want to hear anything else. If truth be told, if we haven't been that way, we've met people who are, that you can speak truth upon truth, and all of a sudden they don't want to hear, or they're fighting back, or they're combative, or they're trying to just throw stuff at you because they're tired of hearing truth. That means that they have become people who have given themselves over to a sinful lifestyle. Because if Christ is still in us, there's a portion of us that will submit to truth. But if we have given over to the lifestyle of sin, we'll fight to keep it. We'll fight to have what we want instead of being what God wants us to be. So anytime you see someone and we're trying to give truth and they're fighting more than they're submitting, that means that some part of a, of a worldly lifestyle has become a dominion, has become what we talked about a few Sundays ago. It's become a gate in which evil is coming through. Because understand, the same way that as Christians, when we give the word, it should also be given to others. The same thing happens with evil. When evil is given to others, it continues to spread. So we see that they're so angry, they scream, they cover their ears, and they rush him. Verse 38, they threw him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. We'll see him soon. Verse 59, they were stoning Stephen. And as he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Does that verse not sound familiar? As a certain savior who said it a couple books ago, and he said it unto people who had crucified him on a wooden cross. It is funny that Stephen, being the first martyr of the church, that he is the one that has to say the same words as our Lord and Savior. That he is the one that has to stand in the position that his, that his people wouldn't stand in, that his people couldn't stand in. But he had to be the one that to be stoned for the church. And it frustrates me because I wanted to, I'll teach on this later, but we understand that when Christ gave the Great Commission, he said to go unto Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. But when we see Acts, chapters 2 through 6 only happen in one place, Jerusalem, which means that he had to die so that the word of God could go forth because the people of God did not do as they were instructed. Do we understand that we can see good things happening for the local people, but God is telling us to do a work intentionally? And if we don't do the work intentionally, there will be things that happen, causes that will happen, that will plunge us into a work. I believe, and I wonder, it's a theory and that's all it is, that if they had done what Christ had told them to do, maybe Stephen would not have had to die. But it was after his death that the persecution of the church began and it scattered the people of God throughout different regions. We must be careful that we're not being so on fire for God that we're truly missing what God tells us to do. Because when we have results like this, it shakes the church. It makes the church have to then get back into a balanced position and make us have to repair things that we should have already seen coming. But he said to them, Lord, I receive, receive my spirit. And I wonder sometimes, do we feel the same way, that when we're surrounded by people, we're frustrated, we're persecuted, we're, we're just in a place that we're tired and we truly just want to give up. But God is saying to each and every one of us, hold your head up. I have a little bit more for you to do. There comes a time that we all get tired in this work. But until God says it's time to go, we can't throw in the towel. No matter our age, no matter how long we've been doing it, we must remain open to learn something new, to do something new, and to receive the word in a new way. Um, as we know, this is, um, as we say, Black History Month. Um, it's also a national holiday. It's my birthday month as well. So we understand that there are two major things going on here that I want to show you. Um, in, uh, well, see, I told you I'm a love of history. Back during integra uh, integration, when they were trying to get the schools integrated, there was a young girl by the name of Ruby. There was a movie I watched when I was a kid, and she was one of the first girls in her area to be integrated into the local elementary school. And so every day when they took her to school, she had to be brought by armed guards because there were people standing both on the left or the right of the entrance of the school yelling at her, frustrated with her, and mad that just this little girl was going to school. And she did this day in 
and day out, day after day. But there was one day in the movie where she was walking up the stairs to her school and she turned around and she said something and then the guard pulled her into the school. Later on, someone asked her, Ruby, you turned around before you went in school. What did you say? And she told them, please God, forgive these people because even if they say those mean things, they don't know what they're doing. Verse 60 shows in Acts 7, then he knelt down and cried unto the Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And saying, and after saying this, he fell to sleep. The hardest thing for us to do, my brothers and sisters, is to when we are surrounded by evil and we want to retaliate and we want to fight back, after we've given truth, after we've tried to show them Christ, we sometimes have to pray and say, Lord, forgive them for the things that they've done. That is what we call the true example of being the church, not retaliating because the battle is, as the Lord said, the battle is not ours, but it is the Lord's. If we believe that, that means the position that I have to take is not always a combative position, but instead a position of prayer. Because Stephen and Ruby and Christ all said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Charge them not for the evil they have done. Forgive them, Lord. And even on this day, as we meet people who have anger against Christ and God, not because of Christ and God, but instead because of man, we have to know how to pray, Lord, forgive them. Lord, help them to see who you are so that they can be better, so that we can be better, because understand the church can only be better as souls are added to the church. Losing people does not help the church, but when people give their lives to Christ, it allows a newness to come into the house of God. It allows a freshness to come in. And I believe that Stephen's sacrifice is not in vain because the only way some of us know Christ today is because of the sacrifices like Stephen, like Paul, and like those who traveled far beyond their comfortable spaces. God is saying in this day, be not afraid to travel and spread the gospel in uncomfortable spaces. Be in the places that God has called you to be. Be everything that God has called you to be. And I promise you at the end of the day, It'll be better because we did what God said instead of doing what we wanted to do. And I tell you this as I prepare to end. It's going to be all right. That I believe that where God is taking us, he is growing us to be people that no matter where we go, they will see Christ in us. That when people approach us with crazy and random conversations, that we'll be equipped to have those conversations. That God is building up his people that you may not be in church, you may be in the grocery store, but you hear someone who needs Christ and God guides you their way just to give them a quick word. And I believe that as God does that in you and in my life, that we can be better people for God, that we can truly live up to what Stephen said when he saw the presence of God and he saw the right hand, Christ standing at his right hand. So don't be angry. And if we are angry, we need to figure out why so that we can purge that evil from our hearts so that we can be better people for Jesus. Because when the church is angry, something's wrong. Amen? Amen. When the church is angry, something's wrong. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for allowing us to just be in your house of worship. But God, we ask right now that you search our hearts. And that any part of us that is not like you, you show us how to get rid of it. The practices that need to be in place so that we can glorify you all the more. God, we ask right now that you continue to watch over each family in this place. That God, as this year continues, that we continue to be people who stand on your word. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when we're alone. But we truly should remember we are never alone. But you are always with us. You are an omnipresent God. That in all that we do, you stand beside us. That you are always protecting us. That you're always keeping us. Show us the way so that we can be more like you and less like the world. We thank you for all that you're doing in this church. We thank you for all that you're doing in the church universal. For this year will be a changing year. 
this year will be a different year for your church as long as we abide and obey your word and your will. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we've come now to the hymn of invitation. Um, which one is it? I left my thing with it. Number five. Number five? <laughs> and as always, we'll stand, but anyone who feels comfortable, if you need to come forward for prayer, if you need to come forward uh, to give your life to Christ, to join the church, um, I'll be up here. So you know, I'll be here to pray with you, I'll be here to walk with you, and I'll be here to guide you. And so let us stand for the hymn of invitation, number five, which verse? All, All verses. And I would like to say that I can't do it because I can't even get to where you're going to wind up. Yeah. The song is over a thousand times to sing. I like it. I like it. It's a good one. You all know Miss Linda. She's been. This is the third Sunday she's with us. Um, she's from Fort Lauderdale. Um, she met with me this week, and you know we talked, and she told me how she feels about our church, and she wants to become a member of our church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's put our hands together for that. Uh, yeah, we are loving people. Um, you have already seen that, and you'll probably know it even more now. Um, that we are the Table Church. We are here to help you build, and I think you've come at a great time. God will be glorified even more. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for Sister Linda. God, we ask that you continue to guard, guard her heart from everything that would try to take her from you. For Lord, in the times that I've spoken to her, I've seen that she has a yearning to know you more, to be closer to you, and to give you all the glory and all the praise. She comes with an honest heart seeking to know you. And God, we thank you for that. God, we ask you to continue to watch over her, keep her, and continue to show her the ways that she can glorify you in this place and in this community. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the past. <laughs> Have a seat. I'll talk to you. Let's God, we ask that you watch over every family as they prepare to leave this place. Allow them to have a great week. Allow them to continue to do the work that brings glory into your name. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Both now and forever, let all hearts say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You have a great day. Amen.